Hey, welcome back to Gone and Medic TV with me, Regan Tetlow, and ATC Nick Gaber. Nick, welcome. Hi. Before we do anything, let's just do this. We're going to take a quick picture and we're going to just put that online right now. We've got the social wall for you, ladies and gentlemen. This is the social wall. If you want to be seen, want to be heard, hashtag Gordon Bennett 2019. It's there on the screen for you. And we'll come back to the social wall a little bit later and see your pictures or your videos on there. So get a pic right now, whatever you're doing on Twitter, hashtag Gordon Bennett 2019. And there we are. Look, it works. It works, Nick. <laughs> the magic of live television. All right. So, Nick, let's have a look at the tracking. Let's see what's going on, where we're at right now. How's your, first of all, how's your day been? Has it been stress-free or has it been terrible? No, no it, um, I, it was not a stressy day. Not at all. There were some surprises, but we had time to, to solve them. Uh, to have uh, quite a lot of uh, phone calls and uh, to look up uh, the permits we had because uh, we saw that it might be going to Romania, to Bulgaria, to Serbia and we had to recheck all these permits to know where to phone, where, who to contact and um, for us we are not allowed as um, the event directors or in the direction to inform the crews about that but uh, we should know ourselves what uh, what has to be done and if we told the crews everything we they should do and it's a case it's a case that's really interesting actually so you, yeah you know people might not realize that the information that you get doesn't all go to the pilots they've got to work it out yeah yeah exactly so we have um, i worked about four months to have all these permits and uh, it was uh, quite a lot of work with Balkan states. Uh, they were every everybody was quite happy that we announced this uh, event to them because they are not used to have the balloons there and uh, this, such balloons who are flying uh, for days for days they do not know that. So it was quite a lot of uh, explanation to do. And even today uh, we had uh, two countries. Uh, where they said that we never saw that uh, so uh, they are even a little bit uh, not 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 worried but rather um, surprised and happy that uh, something's happened a little bit out of the routine That's interesting we've got a message through there from michael Bramman says great job atc and just above that we've got one from uh, patricia says uh, such a great race Go, 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 Belgium. Everybody's looking at Belgium right now yeah, and yeah. Spain and the Swiss. We spoke to Thomas Hora in the headquarters of Belgium and Spain a few moments ago. Let's see what Thomas had to say. So we're here at the headquarters of Belgium and Spain and uh, one of the USA teams, Thomas Hora. Hello, my friend. Hi, Regan. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. You're, just, you're managing two teams now, yes? That's correct. Yeah, one team has landed northeast of Munich, uh, but two teams are still in the air and flying towards Romania. Yeah, what a day. Everybody's bunched together. Everybody's on the same track. That's true. They were split quite a bit, the balloons, but they now found the autobahn down to the Black Sea, yes. So how's the day going there? What's been happening at the headquarters? Um, so our day started with uh, the landing of uh, Mark and Sherry uh, northeast of Munich, uh, which uh, we knew in the night already. They they had energy uh, issues um, and also issues with the communication. So the primary radio wasn't working as much and the secondary radio was still working, but wouldn't have uh, lasted to fly through Austria and um, through Hungary and Romania. So the safe decision was uh, to land and they found a nice spot. Uh, friends of ours uh, were at the landing site. So um, everything went well. I think uh, quite happy they had a nice flight. 40 some hours is also a good achievement. Um, then the, the next issue uh, or issue was how, how to get our um, balloons through Vienna airspace. That was uh, very smooth. Thank you very much for the air traffic controllers in Vienna. They did an excellent job there. Um, we, we managed to get them around the highest peaks of the Alps and um, they broke in the morning, the uh, Spanish broke their Spanish duration record and in the afternoon the Belgians broke their um, Belgium duration record. So we have two duration records right now on the clock. Um, 
we're, we were watching the weather. As you know, there's a weak cold front coming in from the north, uh, which uh, causes some destabilization. We needed to get them clear of that, so a lot of south was necessary. But everything goes according to plan. Really, we are very, very uh, satisfied with uh, the progress. That's great. Everybody watching back home. Now, of course, the big question on everybody's lips as we go into this fourth night is who's going to land and who's going to continue through the night. I mean, obviously, you're not going to speculate on your teams, are you? You're not going to give that information away. Well, I actually can. Uh, we are going to fly through the next night. Uh, both of them are uh, quite well equipped on ballast. So, and that doesn't um, give any, uh, let's say this way, it doesn't help any other teams whether they know whether to fly or not. I think every team flies by itself, um, does their strategy and uh, just because they know we are not flying on. So yes, um, we are going to fly through the night. Well, that's good. That's good news. Belgium and Spain flying through the night. Thomas, um, the teams that have landed already, any surprises there in your eyes? Well, yes, actually, um, France and Poland landing in front of Munich was uh, quite a big surprise to us. Um, it was also a big surprise to us that they um, went ahead like that. Um, in uh, our planning, we tried to delay the teams a little bit due to uh, Munich Airport. So we are very sorry for that uh, because that's not the way you want to uh, win a championship. Um, but uh, it was unfortunate and I understand Munich uh, ATC. When we came, they were very cooperative, very nice. They helped us a lot. They knew that uh, one of the balloons have a communication problem, but also they had no traffic at this point anymore. And Spain uh, enjoying this loner balloon, I take it. <laughs> yeah, actually, actually, we are we are making jokes here. Um, so tell us the jokes. Let's hear the jokes. <laughs> no, I mean seriously, Spain has already won once. They have up, been up in the air. Um, yes. No, no. After the rip on the field, nobody would have thought they would be participating in the in the race. And hey, look at them! They are now uh, flying amongst the group uh, of balloons that will determine the winner. So I think that's uh, that's qu qu quite a good success there. Yeah, I think and, so. Um, and uh, they, they are celebrating their flight every minute. I'm, uh, they, they are very, very happy. There's a really good mood up there. Also with the Belgium team, they, they, they rock, they have fun. They, um, it's good. And um, also here in the command center, we had a really good time. We, we are listening to some Queen and some other music and <laughs> watching, watching the trajectories. <laughs> good. I hope you've been watching Gordon Bennett TV as well. Oh, sure, Regan. Every, <laughs> we, we, we put our clock after your uh, presentation. Oh, so no pressure there. We have no a pressure. big beamer here, we, we, uh, projector. You see yes. it here? Yes. A huge projector. So that's where you are. <laughs> that's better than we've got here in the studio. That's better than we have. So <laughs> we're well equipped this year, I have you good. It, but when the when the teams are quite grouped together, you know, less than ten kilometers apart, would they ever communicate with each other? Would they ever have any radio contact with other teams, or do they keep that strictly not? So, so our two teams have uh, quite intense contact and exchange. There's no secret. Both contacts know about each other's uh, track, altitude, speed, and ballast situation. Um, so they, they work uh, together. Um, other than that, you sometimes talk to each other, yes. Um, um, I, I think it depends on each other's likes or dislikes. Uh, I, I think uh, once you have been up in the air for 70 hours together, um, although you're not in the same basket, I think that's a special friendship. Yes, I'm sure it is. It really is developing now. That time, 70 hours, it's almost difficult to comprehend what it must be like to stand in one place, to sit or lie in one place for such a length of time. Well, actually, to be honest, it gets better the longer it gets. So the first day, you usually feel quite uncomfortable in the basket because it's, everything is so tight and and full. Obviously, the longer you fly, the less sand you have around you, so you get also more space. Um, but um, after the second day, um, it, it gets good, and at the third day, you feel quite comfortable in the basket. 
it, Thomas, if you, you are to, getting used to if you are to think about one outstanding moment from your ballooning career, what springs to mind as that one defining moment to you? Oh, defining moment, positive defining moment, yes. I guess, because I also had some negative. Well, we can, we can, we can talk um, about no, both, actually. As, um, you know, it's good content. No, 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 no. The po po positive one. I, I have to say probably my most beautiful flight I had was at the Gordon Bennett in 2008, where we flew from Belgium over Great Britain, over the North Sea, Norway, Sweden, over the Baltic Ocean into uh, Finland. That that was an outstanding moment. That was an outstanding moment. And obviously my first flight when I was about four years old, that's also a very characterizing moment. Where was that? It was in flight? a gas balloon. It was, first an, it, was in Augsburg with a gas balloon. It was in a gas balloon, your first flight? Yeah, back then we didn't... Actually, we had a hot air balloon, but back then a hot air balloon was considered as the more dangerous one. So um, my father took me up in a gas balloon from Augsburg, yes. That's amazing. Well, thanks very much for joining us, Thomas. It's good uh, good to it's see you. Thing, and uh, I'm sure we'll see and you back here. enjoy the race. I think we will have a lot of fun next uh, next 24 hours indeed we will we'll be watching closely thanks and good luck to all the guys see you soon bye bye 69 hours now since launch a long time for these guys up there nick let's have a look at the your specialist subject the atc let's see what's going on i'm looking yeah we have it so <clears throat> Very interesting is the actual position of uh, the, the balloons. They're about here. I have a little bit of uh, a problem with the, with the lights here. Uh, this is R Romania, yeah. here. Uh, here we have Serbia and uh, Bulgaria down here. And the balloons are, most of them are in this region now. One is just here after the lake of Balaton. Right. And he, uh, th that's a little bit uh, different situation for him. But the other ones are right tracking now towards the Black Sea. What is extremely interesting is that Bul uh, Bel Bel um, Bucharest is an uh, A area. That means uh, from 2,000 feet above ground up to flight level 175, that's 17,500 uh, feet, uh, is, is an area of an airspace where uh, these balloons are not supposed to fly in. Wow. Uh, it's very, very, uh, very regulated. Huh? How big is that? that is, this, this is this area here, yeah. you see? Yeah. Now it must be a tactic for these balloons to go around. Or it might be that uh, during the night the, the Romanian people let them go. Remember yesterday or last night we had a problem with Munich. Yeah. Munich did not let uh, the balloons uh, fly into their area and France, one of the French people had to, to land because he couldn't avoid this area. But from 11 uh, o'clock in the evening, 11 p.m., everybody else could go through. So those who were behind a little bit were the chancy ones and they could go through. Might be the same here in Bucharest. In Bucharest that if the first balloon, which is now uh, the Swiss 2 balloon, if he goes through, uh, if he doesn't go through, he has to land, the ones, the other ones who are three or four hours behind, they get the clearance. We never know, it's not my job to do that. It's the crews and the, the pilot's uh, job to do that. <coughs> That's one of the things. Now, when, when something which is very interesting for tomorrow for the record. Here is the Black Sea. You cannot go further on because on the other side is Turkey and that's uh, a red zone. They are, we have no permit to fly in. So they have to land somewhere before going over water. The, the, the point from Mobiliar, which is the farthest, the farthest away, is just here on this <coughs> peninsula. Everything which is here is near to Mobiliar, and you know it's the longest distance yes. which gives the, the winner. And then in, in uh, Bulgaria, there is one spot where really uh, at the very end, southern end of Bulgaria, where, where it uh, touches to Turkey, there is a, a, a spot which is uh, 10 kilometers further away than Mobiliar. Otherwise, everything is, is nearer than this one, this point. 
So it's very interesting what they are doing tactically. Are they going around here to the north? But the winds are mainstream is this. And at some certain levels, the wind even turns to the south. So I don't know what happens this night. But this night is uh, very important, I think. And here you see uh, one balloon is uh, crossing. That's fr the French one, French one. He is crossing just uh, here um, on, the, on the front, on the border between Romania and uh, Serbia. And he will enter Serbia a little bit. I think he will continue then to Romania. Depends on the altitude. If he climbs, he continues to Romania. If it stays low with about 2,000 meters, I think, it turns into Serbia. So it is very interesting. And for me, as ATC, we are we are looking at that. And uh, I know that uh, Serbia, I called them the already. We call that naturally also uh, Romania. Everybody is uh, happy to see these balloons, really. Wow. And uh, so we uh, we we are looking looking forward to the next night. Wow, it's going to be really interesting. Not much sleep for everybody tonight. France won. The uh, reason we're actually here in Montbellier from the uh, win two years ago uh, sent us a, some video from the sky. Let's have a look at what they were saying. Hello, this is Christophe for Balloon France One. Vincent is sleeping. So first point on this flight, uh, we are airborne for 64 hours now, um, flying in uh, Hungaria for one hour, I think, after Austria. And the beginning of the flight was quite long, um, really interesting, we really enjoy it, especially this morning over the, the, the Austri Austrian Alps, the panorama was just, uh, just uh, speechless, amazing. Um, probably one of my best flying gas balloon. Um, we are really rested. Um, we think the, the it's going to last. Um, we are prepared for that. We also hope the balloon is prepared also. We will see that. Um, we are in good spirit, high spirit. And uh, we enjoy it a lot. See you. It's quite special for you, Nick. Not a lot of people in air traffic control will get to be involved in something like this. No, oh, exactly. Um, that was a chance that I had uh, 40 years ago when I took a phone, I told you already, I think. And uh, then it started with Chateau Day, this balloon uh, balloon meeting. And from Chateau Day with Bertrand Picard, then the, the orbiter uh, three flights uh, I routed around the world. And now 13 years uh, with, uh, with Solar Impulse, which was so exciting, so exciting. And now, uh, also due to Solar Impulse, I have been uh, taken into Gordon Bennett and it's the third year I, I do that and I really, I do that. I like it. I like it. It's quite a lot of work. It's especially, it's a lot of emails, a lot of telephones also prepare, preparing all these permits. Uh, I started in May uh, to contact all everybody and I had to call many of them in July and in August and just uh, the Romanian Romanian permit I received on Friday afternoon before there was the launch. Only at that moment I had the, the, wow. the and fortunately we have it because we are going to Romania. So it's, it's exciting. It's exciting. I like it. Any more big high profile events coming up for you in the future no. that you can talk about? No, that's a little bit um, something which uh, makes me worry. Uh, for the time, I have no t no job anymore. <laughs> <laughs> We're all in that well, situation when the uh, when the cameras go off. But yeah, you never know. There's always something no, coming no, up. No, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, it's that time of day where we all start to think about dinner. Have you had your dinner yet? Are you hungry? No, I'm not, uh, because lunch was very uh, a big a big plate and dessert and everything. No, no, I'm not uh, too hungry. You're getting fed better than we are. <laughs> I have to, I have to be uh, be back on on the on the job at two o'clock in the morning, two a.m. So I will have a small a small snack before. Well, we are thinking about dinner, and we know the pilots as well. They've got to feed themselves up there for seventy hours right now. Let's have a look at Swiss Two and their dinner preparations. Bye. Swiss 2 short before in-flight dinner at uh, the third day. Yeah? So even that we are in uh, high above the clouds, uh, we still can enjoy nice meals, nice food. So we have now here two uh, freshly made um, instant 
pasta and what do I have here? Veggie snack, yes. And for the dessert we then can take the chips. Um, and everything is ready to go. We are happy here in the air. We go for the next night and fingers are crossed that we make a very good result. Bye. Bye. Keep us supporting us. Yeah, Peter Kelsey there says he recognizes nice. you from the nice. solo. Nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. It's good to get the, uh, the recognition for it's the... It's a pleasure. It it's is a pleasure. Bro. Thanks for joining us, Nick. We really appreciate it. Thank you, Regan. So as it stands right now, two Swiss teams in the lead. Swiss 2, just over 1,130 kilometers. Swiss 1, just over 1,000 kilometers. And France 3, biting at the tail with 1,040 as we stand. It's currently 69 hours and 40 minutes, I think we're coming up on, since the launch of this goal. Gordon Bennett 2019. We're going to leave you with some great pictures from France 1, but we'll be back with our last update at 9pm. We'll see you then.